Hey guys, Mac Kentucky Range Time, back with another episode of our 357 Mag Gel Block Test Series. And <clears throat> today we're looking at the Hornady 140 grain XTP bullet. Now, this will round out the standard XTP bullets. Uh, this is the last one. This is the only one left that I haven't tested. Um, we've tested the 158 flat point XTP, and they make a 125 flat point XTP. And, and I may try to pick that up on my next order. And, and that actually would complete the entire line of 38 caliber XTPs uh, in, in 357 Magnum. But today we're looking at the 140 grain. Um, let's get turned around here and take a look at the loading and then we'll get right on out to the range. All right, guys, so here's a familiar sight. Uh, CCI Magnum small pistol primers, hydrogen H110 powder, Hornady 38 cal XTP bullets. And here is the 140 grain loading. And you can see here how much of that's down inside that case. And, uh, you know, the tip of the bullet stays the same across this entire range of weights. The amount of, the amount of bullet out of the case is always the same. All the excess weight is always down in the case. And uh, I've got some pictures in one of the other videos. It's pretty neat. I might try to find them and add them on here at the end of this and two during the slideshow. But uh, anyway, that's the loading. And here's a quick look at the spreadsheet. This will be coming up also in the slideshow after, uh, after the video ends. So hang around for that. And let's get on out to the range and see what this thing does. All right, guys, next up, we've got the 140 grain Hornady XTP in uh, 357 Magnum. And we'll be running this out of five different barrel lengths, the 20 inch Rossi, the six and a half inch Taurus, which is ported. And I want to note that because we've been getting some, some velocity readings between the six and a half Taurus and the five inch Ruger that have been running really close for an inch and a half barrel difference. So, uh, I want to keep an eye on, on, on it this time, thinking that the ports in the last inch of the barrel on the six and a half inch tracker uh, may be allowing uh, us to lose a little bit of the velocity on these. And then the three inch Rossi and the two inch Rossi snub nose. So we'll start out with the Rossi 20 inch R92. Let's see what we get guys. Velocity, 1,936.6 foot per second. Let's go check out the gel block. All right, so here's a better look at the wound track. And uh, we've got that, that typical expansion uh, with the XTP with those six fragments coming off as the pedals expand. Uh, we got some rotation going on down through here. And again, here's a look at the bullet. All right, guys, let's get back here and try the six and a half inch Taurus. All right, 140 grain XTP in the Taurus six and a half inch tracker with ported barrel. Velocity is 1,341.7 foot per second. Let's go see if we got a catch. All right, one track is starting right here. We got that nice XTP expansion again, uh, three quarters to an inch to fully expanded. We got the, the lead Fragments coming off right at the beginning and wound track tracks right on down through here. And we are sitting here right around 19 inches of penetration. All right, next up's the Ruger five inch. All right, Ruger GP100 five inch barrel with the 140 grain FTX.
velocity of 1323.8 feet per second. And pretty sure we got a catch. Let's go see. All right, wound track starts right here. Again, we're looking at pretty well full expansion for what it expanded uh, within three quarters to an inch. And wound track comes right on down. Got a few little fragments down through here, not a whole lot. And looks like we're sitting down here at 18 and three quarter inches of penetration. And that is a nice mushroom head on this 140 grain XTP out of a five inch GP100. Uh, just edging it out, sitting right behind it. Probably an inch more penetration was the uh, round from the Taurus. All right, next up is the uh, Rossi RP63 with three inch barrel. All right, we did not get a catch and we did not get a velocity. So we'll do this one again. That one squirted out the uh, left side of the gel block. Did get velocity that time of 12.17. Let's go see if we got a catch. All right, wound track is here, right behind the one that squirted out the side. Uh, both of these rounds opened up as much as they were going to within about an inch and a half. Um, had some lead fragments carrying down through here out of both rounds. And here is the catch on the three inch round. Looks like we're sitting at about 18 and three quarters inch penetration. And uh, you know, for a three inch barrel, that, that mushroomed up pretty good. All right, last up with 140 grain XDP will be the, uh, the Rossi Snub Nose, two inch barrel. Velocity of 1075.3 feet per second. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, we did not get a catch with that one. It was kind of close to the top and it angled and squirted right on up out of the top and kept right on going. So let's try this one again. We got a two shot average velocity on this one, uh, 1032.8 that round with an average velocity coming in at 1054.1. All right, hopefully we got a catch this time. All right, wound track starting right here and we have minimal expansion, which is pretty much what we expected. And tracks on down here, goes behind the five and a half inch. And looks like we are setting on about 21. Looks like we probably extended out to about 22 inches of penetration. 
All right, guys, we'll get these dug out and take a look at them. All right, so we're back and we got these dug out of the jail and uh, got some nice results out of this. This this 140 grain weight is a uh, is a nice in between choice here, and as you can see, the the rifle just all but did flatten out. There's really just mangled hunk of lead uh, still attached to that copper. Six and a half Taurus, five inch Ruger, three inch RP63, and the two inch snub nose. And uh, these things just, I'll tell you what, the, the temporary wound cavity on, on each of these rounds, including the two inch was pretty impressive. Now, you know, it, it didn't have the diameter, but it drove through and that wound cavity was very long. It, it was a nice, nice sized wound cavity as far as the diameter, but it also had uh, a, a lot of length to it as well. And, and a lot of these rounds were starting to lose their energy by the time they left the first block. And uh, the two inch seems like it carried a little bit more of that energy, a little bit farther along. And, and, and that wound channel uh, kept that wound channel moving pretty good, so. All right, so here it is, the, uh, the Hornady 140 grain XTP loading. And uh, really, we got the, the performance that we expected out of this. I mean, having done the 180 and the 158, uh, the 125 and the 110, we, we really knew what we were getting with this bullet. And uh, so no, no big surprises here, just a solid performer. And uh, I think, like we noted before, the, the, the biggest difference in these, the, the expansion is fairly consistent across the entire line of weights uh, on this bullet. The, the biggest difference is the heavier bullets have more penetration behind them. So really, if you're, if you're loading these up, um, pick the weight that's giving you the depth of penetration that you want. If you're wanting a pass through, uh, shot on whatever it is, yeah, go for those heavy weights. Uh, if you're wanting single-sided penetration and you don't want to overshoot, say you're running this in a defensive pistol and you don't want to shoot through a bad guy and hit somebody on the other side, then you would want to go with one of these lighter weights that's not going to carry all the way through and, and penetrate through. But if you're shooting game type, then yeah, go with the 158, go with that 180. And, and get that through and through penetration and, and open up that wound channel on both sides uh, to, to let it bleed and, and, and for, for trailing, uh, you know, for tracking purposes. So, uh, you know, just like we said, let the weight suit the, the purpose of what you're doing it for. So, all right, guys, once again, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. Feel free to share my content. Uh, on other social media platforms or in group text or whatever you want to do. If you think there's uh, somebody out there in conversation that, that would find this interesting, feel free to just copy that out to them. And uh, as always, thank you guys for, for watching and, and for subscribing and for commenting. That, that changes the algorithm and that changes my page. So I appreciate that. We've got a couple more of these coming up. Uh, I've got two bullets left here I think that I'm going to test at least and, and two more uh, in a cart that I need to get ordered and get in here in the next week or two and then that's probably going to wrap up our 357 mag series and you know I'm, I'm going to try to move on and do a couple of uh, two or three different bullets with 38 special uh, probably not in as many barrel lengths I'll probably do the Rossi and maybe a, a 38 snub nose uh, just to see the long and the short side of it. And I've also got some more 8.6 blackout supersonic loads coming up. Uh, I did load development on those today, was out to the range and just shot and was taking uh, some chronograph readings and checking for pressure signs and everything. So I'll have those ready for gel block on, on a future outing as well. So all right guys, Mac Kentucky range time and we'll catch you on the next one.